Hey, hey, hey. How's everybody doing? Carl Bryan coming at you. Good to have everybody here. I got my boy Pat Bell. Mr. Bell, can you hear me? I can hear you just fine. How's everyone doing? I bet they're all doing good. I'll tell you what, why don't we open up a couple of lines? You got a little bit of a skeleton crew here today. I'm not sure why. Maybe last days of summer might be freaking everybody out. So they want to be out suntan and their speedo. But I'll tell you what, let's open up a couple of lines here. <laughs> it's a good visual, isn't it? Um, and remember, uh, okay, Ben, I'm coming for you. We're going to open you up. Just make sure you can see Pat's screen. And Ben, you are serious. Ben, you're live. Hey, hey, hey. Hello, hello. How are you guys? So, uh, really look, how's going you? the core crew, it's only you and us, uh, like, well, and that's it, or what? What's that say again? No, I'm saying when you are speaking about crew, is it only you guys and me, and that's it? <laughs> that's right. You're in your Speedo, too? Yeah, well <laughs> done, Ben. Good uh, job. You're dressed up. So, you know, that's so the way we should get everybody the dress for the calls moving forward, Ben. Everybody's wearing yeah. weird, weird Speedos. So I was, going, I was going to ask you, you're listening. So, Iskabov, your last name, is that what nationality? Is it Russian? Is that the obvious? Well, like the accent is Russian Hebrew, but uh, I was uh, born in uh, Azerbaijan, USSR. And wow. then I moved wow. to Israel wow. when I was 13. So, it's kind of wow. like second immigration right now. Wow. Yeah, wow, there you go, man. Awesome. Been around the block. Yeah, cool. Yeah. So you play you hockey in Israel? Oh. What do you say? Are you now in Israel? No, 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 I'm now in Canada. Oh, in Canada, okay. Yeah, Good. getting myself uh, chilled in uh, Winnipeg. Oh, I'm so sorry. Winterpeg. <laughs> no, I'm fine. <laughs> Don't be. <laughs> cool, man. Awesome. And by the way, did I? are you the hockey guy? Uh, not really. Like considering my background, I've seen ice only on the TV. <laughs> yes, I run the TV. Yeah, gotcha. Wow. Okay, cool. Well, awesome, Ben. Good to have you here, man. And you can see yes, uh, Pat's screen. Glad to be here. You see, Pat? you see Pat's screen? Yeah, I see the screen. Good. Yeah, you beauty. Okay, buddy, gonna put you back on mute. Good stuff. Good stuff. Well, all right. So, guys, the uh, the format here. Um, if you, this is a Q and A call, so if you got a question, better either raise your hand or plunk it in the box, and Pat and I will do our utmost to make sure we give you the best answer we possibly can. We need a couple of questions, so you got to somebody's got to get us going here. Um, in the meantime, sorry, Pat, were you going to say something, buddy? Well, I was just going to say to Ben that now that he's out of Israel, out of Russia, into Canada. He can experience the new national religion of Canada, which is ice hockey. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Boom. Let's see who's here. And uh, Valerie, are you there? I think you're self muted. Got your hand up. I'm here. Hey, can you can hear me? So maybe we've just lost Carl. Yeah. Okay. I can't. I, he all of a sudden stopped in the middle of what he was saying. Yeah, you know, the show must go on. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So you have a so, question? I do. I have a couple. Okay. Um, so I've just done uh, three uh, profit acceleration meetings with prospects. Okay. I'm, I've got to do. I took all their input, and then I've got to create their reports, etc. But one of the things that I'm I'm struggling with in the reports is when I uh, try to go in, or when I'm putting in. Um, the uh, share revenue percentage it yes. doesn't show up in the report yeah the unfortunate thing is that the reports were built um before we created that additional share like we we built the, the share function after we did the report so i wonder if so um, even when I'm even before I get to trying to download the report, Pat, it it doesn't show it. So if I don't, I guess I can't no, no, share. No, I can't it, but, um, yeah, like we I don't. Put in, no. I put it. We, I put in the number. So yep. I'm I'm not in the report. I'm actually in the actual in the ROI, ROI section, under the ROI tab. 
Okay. And so I put in my thing and I click save and it doesn't show me the purple and the black. It only shows me the um, cost of the coaching relative to my monthly fee. Oh, really? Okay. So, so I've done it with like four different thing people, four different profiles to see. And I have one client who it's really important for because She's my pro bono client, so there is no monthly cost of coaching. There's only a 10% revenue share, which bumps to 15% after the first quarter, and it do, it shows zero for cost of coaching, and so there's no ROI calculation. Okay, so are you saying that you've got a number in here, and you put a number in here, but you doesn't it doesn't show anything? Yep, I hit save. And it also, okay. if I have zero in the monthly cost of coaching, because she's a pro bono client on the front end, I'm only getting paid on the back end. And I put the 10% or 2% or 3%, it doesn't show it. Okay, let's have a look. And so it works on mine. Um, you know, maybe what we could do after this meeting, if we could just get together briefly and you could share your screen with me, maybe on a Zoom call, and I could have a look at what you're seeing. I think she might be using the old, I think a hard refresh is going to sort that out. Uh, it should, I mean, it should work. We are on, it could be, we're on version 4.0.3, which just got refreshed today. So one thing you could do is uh, log out. Uh, do a hard refresh, which is a control shift R, control plus shift plus R, log back yeah. in again. Um, that would probably be the best way to do it. And then go and have a look at it and see if that works for you. Uh, if that okay. doesn't work, then shoot me an email and, um, you know, I can maybe uh, just let's get on a Zoom call and I can, um, you can share your screen with me and, I can see if we we'll have a look at what's going on. Okay. I thought that um I had done it before and it showed me. And then uh, when I went back um, with real prospects, and I've, I'm on version 4.0.3. I just checked. Okay. Um, but I'll go ahead and do this hard refresh, and then I'll, I'll let you know if that fixes it. Okay. Yeah. Please come back on and let us know, and hopefully that will fix all the Beautiful. Okay, and may I ask another question, please? Sure, yeah, absolutely. Um, so uh, under the um, industry averages. Yes. Uh, I want to pull up one of the. Is there a way to add, like how do industries that are not there get added? You go, like, um, you example, see my screen. Yep. So. One of, we can't one of add my them. I'm sorry. We can't add them right now, but we have the other in there. So click yeah. on other, and then just type it in yourself. Type in the industry. No, I no. Mean, just type in the net, the net and gross margin there at the bottom. Yeah, but the only thing with the net and gross margins at the bottom is it's not letting me do double digit numbers. So mine only goes up to zero up to nine. Really? Uh-huh. Um, what browser are you using? Firefox. You should be fine. Um, you know what? Go to, this will probably be the easiest way to sort it because you both, you have two technical questions. So in your support tab, then um, just enter your details here and on type of support technical and this will go straight to William your two issues okay and William's the guy that of course has designed all of this and he knows it inside and out and he'll be able to get your answer right away like um, it just doesn't make sense to me that you only get uh, one answer there for uh, that industry average 
Yeah, it only gives me, I tried to do this in the, I was on three sessions yesterday with prospects and um, I was trying to do, none of their industries show up. So like one was personal um, hygiene, like a, a lotion product. So she's a lotion manufacturer, a, about 300,000 a year. And I was trying to put in her industry and we were putting in numbers and it would only go up to nine. Yeah, I don't both of them, the net, the net percentage, the net profit margin and the gross. That's really so, strange. Yeah, I'm something on funky happening. Sorry? Yeah, just something funky happening. So yeah, just email the technical, like for technical support and yep. we'll get it sorted out. I think that hard refresh may help, but, and then maybe just try Edge just for chits and giggles. Um, like try a different browser. Don't Chrome. Well, don't use Chrome. Chrome is the funkiest of all. Um, but maybe try Edge if you have it. Uh, Edge, you're saying? Yeah, yeah, Edge. That's the mic. That's the like Fire. It's Microsoft's version of. Um, there you go. Microsoft Edge. There you go. Okay. <laughs> it's a free download. Um, so yeah, it's a free download. It's it's uh, you know when I was having problems with Chrome, we used to laugh at Adrian who'd complain about Chrome, and then I has was having problems with my software. I'm like eight or William, why is it not working? He goes, because you're on Chrome. Just switch to Edge. <laughs> fine. Yeah. So all my mocking of Adrian was uh, thrown back at me. <laughs> Unwarranted. There you go. Poor guy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Like, oh, the prophet was right. <laughs> That's right. So, Kuban and Valerie, does that help you? Anything else we can help you with? That helps me a lot. Um, I have one other question, but I'm not seeing it in my notes, so I'll raise my hand again if it comes back to me. Thank you very much, okay. John. Before we let you go, just quick question: How is your lotion company marketing themselves? She's got um, a t a several different. Um, white label companies that are using. So she's not just marketing the, the um, lotion under her Lolo body care brand. Yeah. She's, she's also selling cool. so She's got a lot of manufacturing going that way. And um, right now she's primarily word of mouth and she has some JVs, believe it or not, her brand is a preferred brand among this very niche market called Knitters. Um, knitters? The, knitters? Yep. As a knitting a, um, sweater? Yeah, people who knit sweaters and things like that. And so <laughs> um, it's a it's a lotion that's in the form of a bar, like a bar of soap, and it has fast absorption qualities, and it stays on your hands after you've washed them two or three times. And um, it's, I mean, there are some really beautiful things about it. She's really into social impact. And so right now it's just her website, word of mouth, and then these groups of pockets of, of high users like knitters. Um, yep. Now we're looking at what about mechanics? Anybody whose hands get chapped by what they do, they, their their um, job creates a problem with their awesome. hands. Cool. Just an FYI, what can be a great, um, just follow the M MLM model, right? Like not become an MLM. What I'm saying is just follow the model uh, with the parties, right? So you get women together and they're mucking around and just, you know, give unbelievable per unbelievable margins to the uh, distributors. And then they have like these parties and everybody buys lotion. They're having a great time. They drink a little bit of wine, go home with some lotion. It can be, a, it's a great model. Okay. I'll, I'll okay. share that with you. Yeah, that's it. Like you'll that, that model is a it's 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 a killer. So there you go. Thank you might want to play with that. Cool bananas, okay. Valerie. Good, but good job, good job, and all the action. We're gonna put you back on mute. Just so you know, okay. on the screen there we have knitstars.com. Sure. I there bet you know, Carl, that this is one of my favorite sites. <laughs> I believe you. There you go. How would I how would I know about knitstars.com? You would think that I'm a knitter, but I have no absolutely no interest in knitting. But uh, this could be a good JV partner for Valerie's client, first of all. Um, but the reason I like this site is because um, how can you take this very boring, okay, that's just a subjective point of view from my point of view, 
a very boring thing like staring at a knitting page and knitting. <laughs> and they have knit stars and they have a wait list to get on. And they've built these courses around knit stars and season five instructors. They're on season five. So no, I think it's, oh my for me, as I look at this, this kind of just fires my brain about how can we teach better? How can we um, present our material better? And so while everyone else is out watching Netflix, I am cruising the world looking for <laughs> knit stars and things like that to say, let's improve the way we do things. I I do. And what's season five? It's a show? What is it? Oh, you should go here. I mean, it's just, uh, yeah, it's kind of like a show. They've turned knitting into a TV series. Oh, my goodness. So there you go. We have Crawford Acceleration TV. I think that's where we need yeah. to go. There we go, man. There we go. Mark that one down. Okay, I love it. Well, Valerie, I hope you're looking. Knit Stars. What is that? Knitstars.com. Kaboom. Season five. Okay, we're coming for William. William Pusher. You're on mute, buddy. Unmute yourself, pal. There he is. Well, there he is. William, how's it going, man? Good, good. Um, awesome. Good question. I'm interested um, in um, building the case studies um, for the 10K book and any okay. subsequent articles and using a report in order to document those case studies from the profit acceleration software. I guess cool. what... And, you know, I, I don't want to get into the paralysis by analysis and give too much information in the case study. So what do you recommend is kind of that minimum, make sure we get to this in order to be able to publish a worthwhile case study? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure I'm understanding. So just I would get like the, the what you want to be saying is you can find anybody 100 grand in 45 minutes without spending a dollar on marketing or advertising, or at least I yep. think that's a real solid pitch and you should use a variation of. So I think that you should get them all to a hundred grand and boom, you got one that's 108, one that's 128, one that's 164. Mm -hmm. um, so I think I'd use that, but say you want to say that you'll find somebody 75 grand in 45 minutes without them spending an extra dollar in marketing or advertising, then use that as your threshold. Mm -hmm. That's what I, does that make sense? Is that my um, answer to your question? Um, Partially, and I think I'm already there with that piece. But in order to, um, you know, put it as a case study as a part of the, as the the end of the book or for yep. articles, to yep. provide, you know, a concise way to display oh, the case study. Uh, uh, yeah. So okay. The, um, Pat, it, could you just hit strategies for me, bud, please, yep. on the software? Just have a look at this, William. Uh, yep. Hit the. Uh, where is it? Yeah, just have a look at these. Just hit dentist or whichever for me, please. Mm -hmm. The strategy guide. Yeah, just have a look at that, William. Perfect guide for you. And I would, this is what I would, a, a variation of this is what I what I do. And by the way, you'll see that we've got more lead, you know, leads, transactions, you know, leads, conversions, transactions, pricing, profits, right? Mm -hmm. So you got it all there. <laughs> that help? That's what I would do. Okay, so you're suggesting use the strategies that are already there as far as so, case studies or yeah. use this you as could. the template? Yeah, use it as a template. So then okay. you're working with a butcher, baker, candlestick maker, just, you know, basically use this as a, like, you know, when, when we do the training, right, Adrian refers to it as tracing, right? So if I wanted to, like, you know, this is, a, what is this? This is a dentist. Say you're going to work with a cosmetic surgeon. Look, it's not going to be the same, but no doubt you see that there's going to be some serious parallels between a dentist and a cosmetic surgeon. Yeah. yeah and then a mortgage broker and a realtor, um, you know, daycare and doggy daycare, et cetera. So, so try to use that as just a template and then create your own. And then what you're going to find, what you're going to learn through creating your own through that process. And again, we'll refer to it as tracing, right? Where mm -hmm. like tracing, you know what I mean? I want to draw Daffy Duck. I can't draw to save myself. But if you give me a picture of Daffy Duck and I put a blank piece of paper over top, I can draw a pretty impressive Daffy Duck, right? Because I'm just following. Same idea. Think of it as tracing. So I'm making it yeah, and, um, yeah, tracing or a template. Yep. Got it. Perfect. There Thanks. you go. Does that help? 
Awesome. Yes, okay, sir. good question, by the way. Good job, man. Good luck getting those done. Thank you. Put you back on mute. And we need some more questions here, folks. My boy Dave. Dave's got a question. We are yourself muted, buddy. Unmute yourself there, please. Okay. There he is, Dave. How goes it? Okay, two two questions. One, just on the subject you're talking about, uh, are we are you considering? And I know we don't have a lot. It seems like the the strategy guides are more towards service type businesses and not like people that sell stuff. I don't know if there's any good examples there. If you know, like a you know a snowmobile dealership or somebody that's actually selling products, so it's mostly service based. Uh, I'm not sure what we've got behind. I know we have more behind the scenes. Pat, are you aware if we've got anything that's uh, that's some? I admit that's not something I've ever noticed before. We got lots of them. No, we don't have anything fully developed like these though. Like we've developed these so that uh, they really reflect the uh, profit jumpstart in all the different areas. So, and you see that just the, you know, the titles are comparable to what's here and that's what we wanted to do, but we don't have these, uh, besides these four, we don't have anything else developed. These are really okay, just okay. done. They're given uh, for two reasons. One is as a sales tool for you to say, hey, we can create something like this. And then they're given as a template so that when you go and create something like it, you know what to create. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's just there yeah. was a question asked of me that you know these seem to be all more service all more service based. So okay. Second question on the hundred thousand dollar, you know, using that as a rather than the ten k and hundred k. Yep. What type of volume do they you know if somebody's doing two hundred thousand uh, dollars? It's so easy. Yeah, you just man, if you just do 000? any company. Any company, and you put five percent, and you just got to go add one more area, right? Like you, you get there so quick, it's easy. So yeah, yeah. don't least of your worries. It's you know if they did twenty five grand gross last year. Again, you got to be careful with that because now you you can break rapport because they're like, well, look, this is unrealistic. But yeah, that's no, exactly what I'm finding. Not a, yeah, not a problem. You, that's why you got to water down those numbers and keep them in around five percent. But yeah, don't. If they're doing 200 grand, you're not going to have a problem getting to 100 grand. You just your bigger problem is just making it, you know, realistic. Believable. And as you're doing it, yeah, doing and how do I do that? So an element of education as you're moving along, right? So do you want fries with that, right? Why does the burger stand not do it when you take the numbers and you multiply them by 365? You know, instead of a hundred bucks, you're looking at 36 grand. Holy cow. Right. But what people do is they do their numbers on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. They don't multiply them by 365 and then by three years and then five years, by the way. Yeah. Right. And I guess as part of that, probably not the best place to spend our time. What do you mean? What do you mean by that? Well, it's harder for, I find it's harder for them to justify two grand a month. If their total, yeah. you know, gross pro uh, net profit would, last year was twenty five grand. Yes and no, but again, I just you know I just scale my pricing up and go five hundred, a thousand, fifteen hundred, then two yeah. grand. Okay, I haven't been and doing that. Just, that's, yeah, okay. That's a that's a hack on stink for everybody listening, you and everybody. Like just doing the five hundred, a thousand, fifteen hundred, then two grand. See what people do is they go not look. These guys can't afford two grand, so they bring the lifetime value. They bring the annual fee down to a grand a month, twelve grand. I say no, no, just give them four yeah. to five months to get right, there and then right. go deliver and then make sure they actually do it. They do the upsell, they do the downsell, they do the cross sell, they create the upfront offer and they crush it. And yeah. frankly, it makes you a better coach because now you're that much more invested in them right. getting it done and you always learn more when you do that. Yeah. So Okay, you know what, I know that, but I haven't been using that. That's great advice. Yeah, why, Judy, um, and one thing I was gonna, oh, and so as far as the strategy guys, if there's something, look, Email Adrian and just ask him because we have a we have lots of them. We just don't yeah, have I know them developed. Could, but, but it's just if we're in the software. I know, I know we okay. I know I we do have them, but I'm just saying like it'd be nice on this where we're in the template if one of them was more. I got you. Okay. In the future I'd be amazed if, like at some stage we will. Just right now we got digital acceleration oh, that we're creating um coming out and some other significantly higher 
um, yeah. you know, priorities. So, but yeah. I'm sure we'll get there for sure. Cool bananas. Any other questions? You good? No, that's everything now. Thanks, man. Duty okay, man. I'm going to put you back on mute. Good job. We need another. We need some more questions here, folks. In the meantime, I might open up somebody. I'm going to come to my buddy, Don Evans. He doesn't have a question, but we're going to put him on the spot and make him ask a question. <laughs> How's that sound, Don? He's a fellow Canadian, so we can be hard on him. Donnie boy, don't be shy. I know you're listening. You got to unmute yourself, buddy. Come on. We're coming for you. Pat's clicking. Pat is right now madly clicking your unmute button, trying to get you. He's trying to force it from a self mute. While we're okay. waiting for Don. <laughs> Poor guy. Hey, yeah. While we're yeah. waiting for Don, uh, I want to explain to people something that happened yesterday. And um, we had a coach that was doing a profit assessment in a, with a, in a client's office, I guess. Uh, they were going through and uh, they were going in some of these areas and they'd gone, done the financials already and they went into some place like market dominating position. They entered all the answers. They went through different areas. When they went back to the summary screen, all the updates were there. I guess they said, thank you very much. They closed the tab. They went home and when they opened up the document again, all the answers were gone. And they're saying, what happened? And basically, how can we trust the software if it's screwed up like this? Which is a great question. So of course we jumped in on this. To, we got to figure this out right away. And William was involved. And William came in and said, the only thing that's possible is you lost internet. And so I thought, man, how is this possible that we can keep answering questions when we lose internet? So what I did was um, I uh, put my uh, laptop on airplane mode. I went and actually, sure enough, I answered a lot of questions. This summary screen updated as it should. I closed the tab and then I put my airplane mode off. I came back into the software and everything's gone. And so sure enough, it was airplane mode. So right now, you see where it says profit jumpstart here, right across the top? And you have this blue bar and then you have the the orange bar or whatever and i know in different versions of the software it looks a bit different right now what will happen we have this william do this overnight basically so what will happen now if you lose internet you're going to get a big red bar that crosses your screen that's that warns you you've lost internet and anything you entered um, from now on will not be saved so you have to get that internet restored um, for all that information to be saved before you walk away from it. But at least now we have a warning. It's the first time it happened in over a year from hundreds and hundreds of coaches. So uh, it was kind of an anomaly, but. Uh, yep. So know. if, so Pat, if I, okay, so I'm on airplane plane mode. I yeah. go in and I do, 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 do. I, I'm 30 minutes into it. Um, and then I get, I'm like, oh my goodness, like the red bar is coming up. And then I put, you know, I, how, whatever, you know what I mean? I connect to the Wi Fi, take myself off um, airplane mode, then it will populate. It should populate, let's say. Um, uh, <laughs> I can test the moral. It okay, so the moral of the story, but so really that red bar comes up, you should get internet access immediately then. Just get back no. to internet right away. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So you go. Okay. All right. That's a very good, uh, Okay, that's a good one. So bottom line is they need to have internet. Let's just assume until further notice, they need to have internet connection the entire time right. to make sure that nothing goes askew. Yeah, okay. Yeah, All right, you cool, man. Red bar. You can't miss it. It's just a big in-your-face uh, red bar right across the screen. So if you see that, you know, hey, i got to hook up to internet right away. Okay, awesome. Good stuff, good stuff. Okay, folks, well, we got no more questions here. Oh, no, we do. Michael, I was actually going to open up Michael, and there you go. He opens up a question. Yo, Michael Kiter, what's happening? Go Avalanche. <laughs> yeah. Oh, just said my Toronto, my, my goalie. I feel like I'm kind of still in the playoffs here because my goalie that we cast aside months ago is now winning games like a madman. So there you go. 
Hey, Patrick, can you look at business valuation? We had some questions on some discussions we were having today to see if that was accurate. Sure. On the, on the graph bar. Oh, hang on. I think it was on the okay. summary screen. On the summary screen. Oh, okay. Go back to the summary screen. And we were looking at valuation. Yes. Okay. Yeah, the, the numbers we were looking at on some other presentation we saw was way off. That looks a little more accurate than, than what we had seen. Maybe it got fixed. Uh, well, it depends on what you're doing with yours um, and the answers you put in the valuation questions. So they're all going to be different. I mean, it's it's nothing, no two being the same. Okay. So... Yeah, Michael, you might you just need to revisit your original financials if you're finding that your valuation is at a skew. That's probably what you might want to revisit those numbers. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. No manners. No worries. No worries. Okay. But what do we got yes. here? Just a, a note about valuation. And this is in the training, but just remember that valuation here is really, again, a sales tool. And we want to show clients um, what is possible um, with their growth and their valuation uh, if they were to make the changes that uh, they need to implement. But these numbers are indicative of what's possible. These are not numbers you take to the bank. So as we're selling things, it's like we can say, this is why we have five-year profit impact as well. Because we can say, hey, here's your profit impact. It's $223,000. You know, if we can cement in these changes with good policies and procedures, we should see that the impact last over five years. So that's, you know, 1.1 million over five years. So that's the kind of thing we're going for. But it also shows a valuation increase here. It's just, you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars. Uh, this number is indicative of a change we might see. But this is another reason because at some point, if you're going to sell your business, this is the change in the valuation that you should be able to receive for it. So it's just, they're kind of a sales tool. It's kind of a, we just have to help people see that, uh, you know, it's more than just that single profit impact number. Um, we really want them to get motivated to make those changes. Yeah. And that really, and, and no doubt most folks listening here are big fans of, you know, the Shark Tank, or you might be overseas and it might be more Dragon's Den for you, but the same idea. There's lots of those types of shows out there nowadays. That was part, I mean, that's not, I mean, that's not the reason we did it, but that's a big, you know, everybody, people understand since Shark Tank started, let's put it this way, people understand valuation. Um, whereas prior to that show, the, you know, the average business person didn't really understand valuation and, you know, how it worked and how you'd realize one. Um, so anyway, so I just, you know, just seconding what Pat's saying. It's a, it's a powerful little tool. And I don't think most business owners are thinking, again, they're thinking about next week. Um, and part of becoming a super successful business, you know, business person, entrepreneur, building a big company is about thinking long term and bigger picture. And I think valuation is a big part of that. Just, it's an adjustment in psychology. Um, okay, guys, we don't have any questions here. Okay, well, I'm open up one more. How about Lynette? Lynette Howard. She's here in Capitals, by the way, too. So, Lynette, you are self muted. If you want to say hello, you got to unmute yourself. If you want to be shy like Don. Oh, there she is. Lynette? Hey, but it's usually. Oh, it's John. What's How's it that? going? Good, good. What's happening? Nothing, man. I'm just, uh, you know, I pop in every once in a while on these just to kind of uh, listen to it and just observing. Haven't haven't been using it yet, but hopefully we'll soon. You beauty. So, so I put you on the spot for a question. You're not going to be able to give us one. <laughs> no, not all really. Right. Not an intelligent <laughs> one anyway. No, that's all right. Well, that's and okay. Only an intelligent question is the one worth asking. Yeah, I say lots of intel unintelligent things on these calls, so that's okay. All right, buddy. Okay, right, good thanks. stuff. Good to have you here. We're going to put you back on mute. And what do you think, Pat? Anything else we need to cover today, or do you think we've we've done our job here? Let's have a look. If anybody's got a question, you got to put up your hand now or forever hold your peace, and then we will see you. And by the way, I 
you will not be seeing me next week, guys. I am going fishing, and I am leaving in Canada. It's 30 degrees, and in the U.S., that would be roughly 90 degrees. I'm leaving some very hot weather to go to some very cold weather. And if you, if I open you up and you say why, I'm not going to be able to give you a good answer, but that's okay. But I'm going with my best friend and his older brother, who are more like brothers than anything else. And we're going away. We're going fishing. We're going to have some fun. So I will not be here on Tuesday and Thursday. So my boy Pat will be flying the flag for both of us. So there you go. Maybe we'll get Adrian there to help out. Who knows? Two bananas, two bananas. Okay, hang on. I think actually Valerie's put up her hand. I think she's got one more question. So let's handle Valerie and then we'll be done. Yo, Valerie, we're coming for you. Valerie, did you have one more question? No, I just wanted to say um, I realized uh, I, I went playing around and I figured out what I had done. Um, and so both of the things that I was saying aren't working are working fine. <laughs> oh, okay. And what was it? What was it? Give us like a one on one? Well, when I'm doing these meetings on Zoom, I sort of I, I put the um one of my things on half screen and the other thing on half screen so I can see the client while I'm doing you know I can see my prospects while I'm also going through the assessment and so I think it was just a matter of me squeezing the page too small and that I was missing it wasn't wide enough for me to yeah, see that it was that kind of, yeah oh interesting oh, well. Well, there you go. Okay. Well, there. Well, we so just like, learned something new. Well done. Yeah, I noticed when Patrick was doing the the ROI thing that there is that graph to the right of the word save for the revenue share, and I was like, wait a minute, I don't remember clicking on that. <laughs> and then I went back and um, opened my screen up to the full width of my laptop, and it, it was fine. So it's user <laughs> error. So. There you go. Okay. All right, cool. Well, that very good stuff. We appreciate you putting up your hand to let us know that. So there you go. We put you back on mute. Just a note and, here on uh, the screen here. Oh, um, we got a note here. I was looking at this yesterday, and I just contacted William today, and I was like, man, this just we need to tidy up this whole screen because we got small font, big space, you know, double lines, um, whatever, and save button. We got a calculate button. So we're gonna tidy up the screen. I think we're gonna have those icons that show like a, you know, the floppy disk that you, it's like a save icon instead of the word save here. And we're just gonna uh, make this look a lot nicer over the next day or two. So just refining things like that and um, trying to make it easier to look at because my, my 10 here is cut off. I don't like this. So, you know, when you're showing it to a client, you want it to make, want it to look nice and that's just a little thing we're trying to make happen so yeah. beautiful here we go good job pat as always man we all appreciate your magic man and your attention to detail with a very monster project so that is awesome and for everybody who is here we appreciate you guys we appreciate you showing up we appreciate your questions and um again next uh, next week we're on for tuesday and uh, come with some questions, and uh, Pat will be here to answer them. So have a great week, folks, and we'll I'll be speaking to you the week after next.